I'm Dr. Skip Truitt, Director of the Clinical Foundation of Orthopedics and Orthodontics, and welcome to our program this evening where we're going to compare traditional orthodontic thinking with the more modern concepts of maxillofacial orthopedics. So I'd like to start by showing you an example of how a particular case can be viewed differently. And we're not going to change the slides here. <laughs> there we go. I have to go to another place to change them. Normally when I show doctors the top picture that you're seeing now, the first thing that comes to mind is the problem of the upper left cusp. At the end of the day, the reality is that the maxilla is extremely narrow, and that's the reason the cusp is blocked out. The maxilla is so underdeveloped that the mandible has been shifted to the patient's right side. So the midline shift you see is actually a skeletal deviation causing the right condyle to be distalized on the disc. So in reality what I have is actually an orthopedic problem causing the orthodontic problem. The bottom picture is nothing more than the result of fully developing the maxilla. There's been no orthodontic therapy on the patient at all. And it makes the point that the cause of the entire malocclusion was the underdeveloped maxilla. As you go through life, certain people affect the way you see things. And I was very fortunate to run into Dr. Hans Peter Bemmler very early in my orthodontic career. And he just made me see things in a totally different direction. One of the things he pointed out to me was that the maxilla does more than just support the dentition. The maxilla forms 75% of the floor of the respiratory passage. It forms the floor of the orbits, forms the lateral walls of the ethmoid sinus. So many things are going on beyond just crooked teeth having an underdeveloped maxilla. The maxilla is derived from the ectoderm, forming dermal bone, <clears throat> and the key point there to understand is that dermal bone is driven by function as opposed to genes. So any genetic influence on this bone is what is called neurotrophic, the effect of the muscles, the blood vessels, the neurovascular system on the developing bone. It's not a direct genetic transfer. Whereas when we look at the mandible, it's an entirely different scenario. The corpus of the mandible is developed from the mesoderm, forming chondral bone, much like the long bones of your legs. So the point being there is the driving force behind condylar bone growth is genetic. 